this morning to come forward for our children. sometimes and we like to roll some marshmallows and all that kind of stuff and that's pretty fun so I'm gonna light a fire here this morning just a little candle but I'm gonna talk about something else about fire Jesus talks about how fire is kind of like faith let me tell you what faith is faith is trust trust is something that we have when people tell us they're gonna do something that they're gonna do it like your parents do you trust your parents if you're, you trust that your parents are going to take care of you, that they're going to pick out nice clothes to get you dressed in? Yes, right? <laughs> trust your parents, because when they say something, they do that. They help you. Faith is trust. And we trust our God, don't we? When our God tells us something, we trust Him. Like, for instance, when God tells you, I will never leave you. I will always be with you and help you. Do you think He will? Yes, absolutely. We trust that. We have faith in that. One of God's greatest promises. He says that because he died on the cross to take away our sins, someday we're going to get to live with him where? Right? And we trust that more than anything. Faith is like trust. When God speaks to us, all of a sudden we have that trust, we have that faith, we have that fire. And it makes us warm, it makes us happy, it shows us, like light does, where we're going to live. Now, the problem is that sometimes the devil, or even sometimes this world, and people in this world, try to blow out our faith. And then we can't see, then we're not warm, then we might be scared. But God promises that as long as we listen to his word, his word is like fire. And when we listen to his promises, he promises again, Lauren, I'm never going to leave you. Glenn, I'm going to live with you forever in heaven. The more we hear that, he lights that faith up, and we can see again, and we're warm again, and we're happy again, as long as we listen to his voice, which is why we talk about it all the time. We talk about what he's done, how he loves us, how he died on the cross, how we're going to live with him forever in heaven. The more we do that, the more we trust him, right? <coughs> so we're going to do that some more in our sermon today, but first, why don't we fold our hands, and we'll, we'll thank him for all that he's done. Okay, let's fold our hands. Dear Jesus, we thank you for loving us so much that you gave up your life so that we could live with you forever and ever. We ask that you help us to remember that. As we listen to your voice, help us to remember all that you've done for us, all that you promised to do for us, so that we love you in return and that we trust you always. We ask this in Jesus' name. All right, thanks for coming up. You will see what you're We will continue by singing verse 3 of our But just to sit and to watch it. 
I always pray that my kids remember these times. They look back and remember the fun that we had, the fires that we made, the good times, because I, I do. I remember some of the fires I used to make with my dad. One in particular, I remember one summer, he, actually, no, take that back. This was in the winter. But he threw an entire spruce tree, a dead spruce tree on the fire. And that thing lit up so fast and so big. I closed my eyes. I can still smell it, and I can still see it, and I can even feel the heat a little bit. Can you? Probably not, because it's not here. If the fire were here, trust me, you would hear it. You would smell it. You would see it. And you, in the front row especially, would feel it. But it's not here. It's just a, it's just a memory of a fire that existed long ago. Fire is a fascinating thing. I'm going to hopefully not bore you, but I'm going to give you a little bit of science behind the fire. You know what fire is? Fire is something that happens on a molecular level. It's when oxygen mixes with certain compounds, such as, let's say if it's a wood fire, the carbon in the wood and some of the volatile uh, gases that are emitted from the wood. <coughs> And when that, and it doesn't spontaneously combust, when, when fire, when heat is added to it, and it gets to a certain temperature, then the oxygen begins to mix with those other compounds, and you have fire. Now you can't see that, because it's on a molecular level. It's molecules and atoms that are so small you can't see it. But what you can see is what it produces. You can see the flame, you can see the light, you can feel the heat, and you can smell the smoke. You can't actually see the molecular reaction, but you can see all of the things that come from it. Thank you, Professor Thiesfeld, 11th grade chemistry. <laughs> but I bring this up to you today, and I hope it makes a little bit of sense, because in a way it, it very closely represents faith. Faith is something you can't see. Only God can see the heart. Faith exists in the heart. But you can see what faith produces. And it is the lesson that Jesus teaches us today in the epistle of James, chapter 2, where he talks about faith, which is that God's greatest gift to us, is seen in what it produces. Faith produces confidence. Faith produces love. And faith produces action. This is what faith does and what faith looks like in the life of the world. I'm going to read you this, this last section, taken from James chapter 2, verses 14 to 18. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is death. Someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. This is God's word. God's lesson for us today is on faith. And, for the sake of visual and because I'm a child at heart, I like to see fire. We're going to show a little fire today. Faith is like fire. In fact, Paul encourages his young friend Timothy to fan into flame that gift of God that was given to him through the Holy Spirit. Faith. Faith is like a fire. And it produces many things. First of all, and granted, our text doesn't really address this very fully. But it is one of the great aspects of faith, and that is that faith produces confidence. I want to read to you another passage which definitely complements this. On the one level, it may seem to contradict this, but we're going to get to that. Knowing that no scripture contradicts itself. But this is taken from Ephesians chapter 2. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
one beautiful truth here is that it is by grace we have been saved through faith. It's not anything that we do. And that's so important because as we look at our lives and we are honest with ourselves, you're honest with yourself, I'm honest with mine, we do not live up to God's standard of behavior and of thought and of love. We don't. And God is very clear that in order to have his love, we need to be perfect. We need to be holy. But it is God's grace that sent Christ into the world. It's God's grace that caused him to take the blame for all that we've done. And God says, believe me, trust me, and you will live. It is that faith that God gives us that assures us that we are forgiven. It assures us every day that despite ourselves, we have that beautiful relationship with God that guarantees us a place with Him in eternity, but also right now. That faith gives us confidence. Faith gives us confidence. But faith is often confused with knowledge. Faith and knowledge are two very different things. For instance, I'll give you an example. Um, boating. That season is coming sadly to an end. But at the beginning of each season, we kind of wrestle with this same thing. We wrestle, especially when my kids were little, with jumping off of the boat into the water. One of our favorite pastimes. But as my kids were, were little and didn't know how to swim, it was a scary proposition. And even now, sometimes I make them wear life jackets when, the, when it's rough or when we're on the ocean. And, and the thought of drowning is a scary thought. But when you have that life jacket on, you are allowed to have confidence to jump into the water and know that it will carry you. Now, knowing that a, that a life jacket will carry you and trusting a life jacket will carry you are two very different things. And you can see that in the eyes of somebody who doesn't fully trust it as they stand on the edge of the boat and they're still afraid of drowning. Knowledge in something and trust in something are not always the same thing. How many people in the world do you think have not heard of Jesus? Probably very few. How many people in the world have not heard that Jesus died on the cross to take away your sins? Probably the majority of the people in the world have heard that, have learned that at some point. But learning that and trusting that are two very different things. Just knowing something, just hearing something, is not the same thing as trust. Trust is something that God inspires in us. And he knows it doesn't come easy. It's like a fire. It does not combust in itself. It doesn't start itself. It has to be given fire. It has to be raised to a certain temperature, and then it will start to burn. It has to constantly be fed. God knows that our trust in him is not something that will come to us naturally. He has to speak. He has to encourage, like in any relationship. In order to trust that somebody loves you, in order to trust that somebody will be there for you, they need to prove that. And it's something that God does in his word again and again and again and again. And God knew it would be difficult. I'm going to digress just a little bit. It's why he created the Sabbath day. Go back to the creation. God created all things in six days. We were learning this in our Wednesday Bible school, which we just started up, and that's fun. God created the world in six days. Why a seventh day? God knew that we would need to stop and look at all that he has done, because only then would we appreciate that he did it. Now, sin came into the world. God gave us another thing to appreciate. Forgiveness. That he has completely forgiven us. That even though we are sinful human beings, he will never let us go. He will never drop us. But we need to hear that on a regular basis in order to believe it. Just knowing something that you learned as a child and trusting something are two different things. In order to trust that God loves us, we need to hear his voice. We need to hear him speak. But when we do then we have that confidence. We have that confidence that he will never leave us. It's the single greatest gift of faith, the confidence to know that we are his and will always be his. But confidence is not the only gift that God intended us to have. 
He didn't just want to restore a relationship where we knew that he loved us. His desire was to restore that relationship in full, to convince us that he loved us, but also to inspire us to love him in return. And he knew that you can't teach love. You can't command love, rather. You can only inspire it which is why he speaks to us regularly and says, I love you. I forgive you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And when we hear that, not only will we have confidence, we will have love. We will love him in return. And when we love, well, what is love? That's the age-old question, right? What is love? Well, love, like faith, is in here, right? You can't see it. Except for just like faith, love does not exist by itself. It is not just in here. You might not be able to see love, but you will see the things that love expresses. You will see devotion. You will see kindness. You will see self-sacrifice. You will see generosity. And above all, you will see forgiveness. These are the fruits of love. And God says, whoever has faith, not only has confidence, but they have love. And they have love expressing itself in action. It's much like fire. When you feed it, when you give it oxygen, when you give it fuel, it builds upon itself. It grows and it grows and it grows. Faith is similar. Faith, when there is that confidence in God, there is that love for God for what he has done, and there is that desire to hear that voice, to hear the voice of the one who loves us. And the more we hear that voice, the more we grow in our faith, the more we grow in our love, the more we grow in our love for one another, and the more we act upon that love. And it is a beautiful picture. I picture in my mind that, that fire that I saw as a kid, and how when you put enough wood and enough oxygen together, it's amazing. When you put God's confidence into a heart and it continues to grow and continues to show itself in the world, it is amazing. But the inevitable question is, well, why don't we see it more? Because maybe we don't see it more. Maybe I would like to see that more in my life because right now maybe I'm not a blazing inferno. Maybe I'm a mediocre fire or maybe just a flicker. Why is that? Well, fire, as much as it will consume and as much as it will burn, is also capable of being snuffed out. Once again, thank you, Professor Thiesfeld. I'll tell you how. Fire needs fuel. And fire also needs to maintain a temperature. It allows those things to combine. If you take either of those things away, the fire will die. One way to kill a fire is to simply rob it of fuel, rob it of oxygen. It may not die right away. It will consume the oxygen that it is given and it will continue to burn for a while, but eventually, unless it gets more and more oxygen, it will die. Faith. Faith comes from hearing the message. Messages heard through the Word of God. Or simply in a relationship, if you want to be convinced somebody loves you, they have to constantly con convince you. They have to tell you. They have to show you. And if they don't, then you won't believe it. Faith will eventually die. Now, there are so many things in life that try to pull us from the fire, try to pull us from the fuel, to rob us of that fuel that strengthens faith. And if you look at your life, you will probably recognize that. What are those things that, that rob us of that time with our God? Rob us of that time with His voice? As much as our faith and our love for God wants to hear His voice, what are those things that keep us from doing it? Well, maybe it's something like work, which is a necessary thing. Maybe it's something like hobbies. Maybe it's the fun that we want to have. Maybe it's the chores around the house. Maybe it's a desire simply to hold onto the pillow for another hour or two. Maybe it's 
Twitter or Facebook. Maybe it's my friends. No, you can think of a thousand different reasons, and all of them good, maybe. But if all of them take the time that we could have with our God, eventually, that knowledge and that confidence that our God gives only in his voice will die. And you know that Satan knows this. Which is why he's very subtle and he puts good things in front of us to rob us of that time with our God. But it's not just the robbing of oxygen that can destroy a fire. It's not just the robbing of our time with God that can put out a fire. There's another way to put out a fire. It's by cooling the fire so that it does not have the energy that it once did. It does not have the energy that it needs to have to continue to burn. One way to do this is by taking the cold energy of my fingers and transferring that to this candle. And consequently, transferring the heat from that candle into my fingers. <laughs> But by making that candle cold, it will die. Faith desires to express itself. Faith needs to, to express itself. Jesus says, if you love me, you will love my children. And if you believe in me, you will love me. Faith has to express itself. And it wants to express itself. 